Hi friends. I'm Leah Noel, Aviatrix Stitcher. Thanks for being here today. How are you? Um, I'm doing well. You haven't seen me since December when I did my whip parade. Um, so what have I been doing? Where have I been? Yeah, I know. I've been getting those questions. Um, so I thought it was probably time to pull myself together and get a video update up out there. Um, so, <laughs> uh, okay, so thank you so much for all of the positive responses on my whip parade. Uh, it blew me, a li blew me away a little bit. Okay, you see how... Like I'm stumbling over my words. That's something that happens when I get nervous. And I I haven't been making these video updates uh, since December because, well, because a few things happened. <clears throat> um, for one thing, my whip parade was one of the most viewed videos that I've ever posted, which is, I don't know, a little intimidating to me. Um, I rolled over a thousand subscribers, which if you're here, if this is your first time seeing me after subscribing, um, <laughs> I'm not always as awkward, I don't think, but, um, and then my husband, has been telling people that I have floss tube and by people I mean like my family members so and friends so um there's people that I know in real life not that I don't know stitchers in real life but you know what I mean it's a little different so I have some family members potentially watching and maybe some friends that I know that are not watching so I just feel ooh, like the pressure's on. So um, yeah, I've been a little bit stuck in my head about how this next video is gonna go. And um, ultimately, I just had to face my anxiety a little bit and put this update out there. So now you know what's going on, sort of. Um, I don't think I'm going to go into any life updates in this video, um, just mostly stitching because I've been stitching and I have a lot to show you. I've got two finishes, um, a bunch of whips, a handful of new starts, and then I have some plans that I need to talk to you about. So. Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what sort of leaks out throughout the video. Um, but other than that, um, if you're here today and you are still watching, you know, after mm, four minute intro, uh, let's just dive in and focus on stitching for a little bit so I can relax and get this out there. So I have two finishes as I stated. Um, the first one is a small that I stitched for my son's preschool teacher. It's called Thankful by Heart and Hand. It's super cute. Oh, super cute. And it's just a cute little small. I used all the called for colors on this and the fabric is like mocha or something, maybe vintage mocha, I can't remember. But it's a Zweigart, um, something with mocha in it. Um, after I started stitching this, I learned that this teacher that I'm stitching for, um, her favorite color is purple, and she wears a lot of black and white. So um, I was thinking to myself, mm, I might have pegged her wrong for these colors, so um, so I'm not actually going to gift this to her. I am restitching this exact design with different colors 
and that's what I'm going to give to her. Um, and so this one, I'm not exactly sure yet what I'm going to do. There were like a handful of people that I thought I might be able to give this to, but <clears throat> I'm not sure yet. I am undecided. So you will see a new start of the same design in a little bit. Next, I will show you. Um, this is snowman and friends stocking snowman <laughs> I was like just staring at this and I had this moment where the letters looked like I don't know just some imaginary symbols and I was like what in the world but it's just because I'm so distracted in my brain <laughs> okay snowman okay and I've got weird glares now I will address these um, circle looking lights in a little while, but Snowman and Friends, sorry, this is this feels all over the place, but I already tried, um, I already tried starting this video probably seven times, and I'm just gonna go with it. I'm just gonna keep going. So, I'm gonna show you before, what it looked like before. And here it is now and I worked a lot on this since you saw it last um, I don't even remember exactly what I worked on but I know for sure I've been building I've been building up this uh, bottom ball and I've been filling in the background here this dark blue and up here uh, right now See, I have my needle stuck in here so I know, <laughs> so I don't get confused about what's on my needle right now because I had, to, I had to stop before I could finish it. But I'm working on the back stitching before I adjust the scroll rods up or down. Um, because I don't want to get to the end and have just all the back stitching left um, because it takes so much time and I don't mind back stitching really, but it's um, it's just a little disappointing sometimes to me when I finish the stitching part and then I'm like oh all I have left to do is the back stitching and then the back stitching takes like as much time as the stitching almost because there's just so much of it so I don't want to overwhelm myself and I've already done some before you know um, before my whip parade actually but I did some more back stitching in this um, broom, I backstitched this bird, I'm working on this mitten, um, yeah, I just gotta finish, I just gotta finish up some stuff here and there, but, yeah, I've just been working on this as much as I can make myself work on it. I'm still enjoying it, and that's what I'm trying to hang on to, I don't want to not enjoy it, because if I don't enjoy it, this is so much stitching, there's so much stitching left to do to not enjoy it, so I'm just trying to give myself a break when I need a break and to be reasonable about picking it up when I should pick it up. Okay, <clears throat> there's that one. Um, another thing I worked on, this is that we're still actually in December, I didn't tell you that, but I'm just kind of going chronologically through what I've been working on. Um, Alright, I've been working on Folk Santa by X's and O's, and I am doing a color conversion of yellow to blue. And I had to pause on this one because I am not sold on one of the colors that I'm using. Currently. So, um, here's my progress. It's looking pretty good, I think. Um, since you saw it last, I started working more on the coat. I put in the blues here. I started to fill in this background blue that I um, that I selected for um, this like mustardy kind of yellow in the background. But um, 
I think I am going to take that out and and use a different color and here's a pro tip if you have a really good idea but you don't have time to do it right then you should write it down and make a note and put it with your project which is what I should have done because I had a really good idea of which color to use and I thought I'll just remember because I'll I'll pick this up you know really soon and and I didn't and now I don't remember what I was gonna do um, but it's okay it's fine um, it is fine I mean it'll it'll work out I'm just doing this um, I'm just doing this one for fun so after December I sort of put it away and you probably won't see it I don't know if you'll see it again well, you might. I'll never say never, but this year is more about, for me, it's more about gifts and um, stitching gifts. Okay, where am I putting everything? Um, so, and then I got something, I have something now that will help me select a color for that, but more on that later. Okay, <clears throat> then over Christmas, I was working on this. This is Welcome Christmas by The Drawn Thread. I love these. These welcome. Actually, um, the summer welcome is the design that was like my gateway, my gateway pattern into kitting up my own cross stitch projects so I love these welcome season designs by the drawn thread anyway um, I worked on this quite a lot um, over the summer enough summer over the over Christmas and New Year's um, even some in January like after the New Year I am using the called for green, which is Matilda. It looks a little darker in the model. You see those letters. But I still really like it. Um, it's sort of like a, it's almost a bluey green. All right, now these stockings are all over one there was there was an over two option like a regular but I opted for the over one stitching because I thought you know I really like the look of over one and there was so much more detail on the over one and I thought well I love this pattern so much how can I not do the over one but oh my goodness it's giving me such a problem because when you do over one on 32 count, like you get some, some, uh, I mean, you, you can't even see it really on the video, but the, the, the floss slips and so you do, you do like an X or something or you do, anyway, it just, it slips, slips and slides all over the place and uh, the the thread frays a lot a lot more frequently and I don't know if you have like if you love over one stitching you know who you are do you have any tips for how to make it go easier do I just need to use smaller smaller lengths I've been using smaller lengths but maybe I need to go even smaller or I don't know I know that tension is a problem too like if you're slipping a lot then you shouldn't be pulling as much but it just seems like it it doesn't matter what I do I just have slipping problems so anyway I got really fed up with this over one section this could be done by now um if I didn't do the over one section this would definitely be done because I've been working on it so much but I had to put it in timeout after 
spending a little bit too much time on that over one section. So that'll come out though. It'll come out again probably next Christmas because I love it and I want to I wanna have it done. But Okay, another one I worked on quite a lot um, before the new year and even a little bit after the new year was... Be My Love by Carriage House Samplings. Um, I love this. I love this project. I am stitching it with Debbie, Minnesota Stitcher, and Amy also stitched it with us. Amy loves toads. And um, I got a good amount of time here, or a good amount of um, progress. I've been slowly filling in the leaves. I have been working on filling in the grass. I think I filled in the grass a little bit more since you saw it last. Um, oh, here's something. So I decided to try out the lightest pink for his socks. If, you, if you've been watching me for a while and you remember like my earliest videos on this project, I didn't know what to do about the socks. I didn't know what color to make them, but I went with the um, lightest pink color and I don't like it because it looks like skin, but it's not the same color skin as his face. So that's going to have to be something else and I don't, ugh, I don't really know what I'm going to do yet. We'll, we'll think of something. It'll, it'll be okay. So um, I've also been like adding strawberries here and there. Did I say I got the border done? I know I got the border done um, and hopefully I've been able to put my before and after picture so you can see that but anyway um oh and the other thing about this one is i am going to change i think i'm going to change these birds to one shade lighter blue because i think they're a little bit too similar to the color of his coat and i wanted them to be a little bit more distinct like distinctly different so yeah doing that I'm gonna be using whisper floss for these little sheep yeah I love this I love this design so much I do I love it and I am not even in a hurry to finish it because I just love spending time with it you know so Okay, then it was New Year's and in January of this year, okay, all the, all the odd months, I'm going to be focusing on this gift for my middle sister. This is called Jingle Bells Christmas Tree Farm by the Victoria Sampler and she wanted it, she wanted it stitched exactly as charted, like exactly like it's in the photo. And she likes this section the most, so I started working hardcore in that section. Um, I didn't have as much stitching time in January as I had hoped. Um, so um, here it was before. And here it is now. So just snow. I just got a whole bunch of snow. I would after posting this on Instagram, um, a lot of people started talking about stitching white. I don't really have a hard time stitching white, and I don't know if it's just because I, I'm i not too critical about how they lay or whatever, but if you, um, here's, I'll just share something that I learned that is really helpful. Um, If you have a big solid chunk of color here and you're using a floss that's not variegated, you can go, well you can do this even if you do use a variegated floss, but you'll get a different, um, it just depends on what you're, you want your color to look like. But um, you stitch one leg all the way down and then you stitch the other leg all the way back. And as long as you're always 
um, starting in the same hole and, and going down in the same hole, your stitches should all lay the same way, and so they look a lot more even. So, I mean, there's, there's some situations where I don't get that first leg to come up in the, in the same hole every time, but I always, always, always make my top stitch in the same, come up in the same hole and down in the same hole, you know? If you need more clarification on that, because I feel like I'm not being very clear, but if you need more clarification, I would be happy to just talk to you personally about it. But that really helps with the white stitches. Like they just, they all look, they all look the same. They all look even and no ridges. Um, yeah, that's just uh, very helpful information that I learned actually from, from you guys. So, okay, I'll be, so I'll be working on that every odd month this year. Yep, so it's March now, so I'm going to be taking that out again, which is great because I've actually been itching to work on that, but I just haven't because it was an even month and I have, well, I'll just show you that now. Um, so for, on the even months, I am working out of this book. Oriental Odyssey, um, Joan Elliott, and I am stitching on this, which I'm calling Purple Geisha. Um, I will not be stitching this periwinkle color in the background, um, and you see this dark, the dark ring on the inside. Um, there's actually two shades. There's two shades of darker blue so that it's the periwinkle and then two more shades of blue and then the gold ring around the edge. Um, I am going to be matching the fabric. So I'll show you. Um, here it was now, or I mean here it was before. And here it is now. So I got a lot of progress on her. Um, happy about that. But you see here, I put the two shades of blue on the inside ring. But I want them to fade into the fabric more. So um, I'm actually going to be using, do you see there is this gray here? This is part of her hair. Okay, I'm going to be using that gray instead of this bright blue. So I'm taking this bright blue out. And it's like up here in the leaves and everything. So it's just, I think that shade was just used for shadowing. So for like a fade effect. But since I'm going to leave this space um, open, yeah, I want, it to, I want it to fade better. So anyway, um, I used the Stitching Mommy method on... Um, on this one. Thanks, Sarah. Actually, I got this pattern from Sarah, so thanks, Sarah, times two. Um, whenever she does ladies, she always tries to, like, she starts in the middle usually and then and then makes her way up to the face and does the face as soon as possible so that she can feel like she's stitching with the lady. So, um, yeah, I did that, and I even did the back stitching on her face and everything, so um, it's pretty exciting. And I shared my progress with my sister, um, my youngest sister, and she's pretty excited too. So that was good. I had that was a good month for me. And then um, Joan Elliott. So, um, so I'm doing that Joan Elliott every even month, and Anne from Fiber Floss and Fiction. She is going to join me. Um, she joined me in February, working on her Joan Elliott fairy. And so if you have a Joan Elliott lady that you would like to, you know, join us, if you, if you want, you can, we're just going to be hauling it out every even month. And it's just kind of extra motivating to know that you have another stitcher friend who's working on another, you know, Joan Elliott. 
pattern. It's sort of a stitch along, but it's not, I mean, it's very casual, so no obligations there. Okay. So, let's see. I also stitched on, this is um, Apple Blossom Sampler by The Drawn Thread, and this is another gift for um, my son's other teacher and All right. and this one I didn't stitch a whole lot but a little bit and every stitch counts So, um, I believe, I, I know I stitched all of this flower. Um, I keep forgetting to, I keep forgetting to say, here it wasn't, but anyway, I stitched all of this flower, um, these letters down here. The, the part of the pattern that I struggle with the most is this branch, just getting this branch filled in and I knew that that would be the problem um, because I just don't love brown and I also I struggle with big chunks of color too so <clears throat> but I'm just trying to do like one strand at a time you know like if I if I do one strand of this brown then I can go on to a color that I actually want to stitch that's kind of how I motivate myself um, when I have that sort of self-control. I don't always have that sort of self-control. So, anyway, it's looking good. Okay, now, some of these need to go back in the bag so I don't... Oops, wrong one. Alright, so... Then I also stitched on Violet's Blue. Um, I would really love to have this done by August. I don't know if it's going to happen for me, but there's, there's what it's supposed to look like. I actually got a big chunk of this done in one sitting, so um, here it was before. And here it is now. So I started on the border. Um, yeah, I started on the border, got a little bit more. Really, I focused on these sort of boring colors. I know they're not boring, but I mean, to me, they're just not my favorite. Purple is my favorite color. So obviously, I had to stitch this sampler with all these purple flowers. Like, you hardly ever see purple anywhere. Um, charted anywhere. But, anyway, I, um, yeah, I just did, I did all this, I did the border, um, I did these. It turns out that I used the wrong floss for these words, but I don't care. I'm just gonna keep that for sure. So, that's looking good, and... <clears throat> um, I took out the, I took out the back stitching that I put around these shutters. I had, um, oops, these ones. I had just tested out some back stitching to see if I could make them stand out a little bit more, and I didn't like how the back stitching looked, and, um, yeah, I just, I was motivated to take that out, so I did. And I'm glad. The house is not totally done, I don't think. We'll see. I really, I hope I can get that done by August because that's our, that's our 15 year wedding anniversary. And then um, I have a drawn thread pattern that I want to do for our 20 year anniversary. And if I can give myself five full years to do it because it's like super big, uh, that would be ideal. So that's my goal for that one. Okay, I'm just checking my list now. Okay, we're on to new starts. 
I have a whole bunch of new starts. <laughs> okay, 2020, um, I'm not gonna really get into resolutions at all, but I like to make resolutions. I like to make um, stitching resolutions and personal resolutions or whatever. My resolution I knew going into 2020 um, for stitching was gonna be gifts 2020. Just focus on gifts, get the gifts out of the way, and then I can start like stitching all the stuff that I wanna stitch. I don't, you know, I'm not obligated to give gifts, but I just want to. And so that's what I'm gonna do. I just have, I have like 20 that I really want to finish this year. We'll see how it goes, but as long as I just make progress on these. So anyway, I have some new starts. <clears throat> um, so here's one. You saw this already, and I'm just changing the colors a little bit. I changed the fabric to something brighter, and I put in some purple, um, kept the pink. I'm removing the yellow and the orange, and here we go. Here it is. Here's my new start. And it's almost, it's probably like halfway done now. It really doesn't take that long, um, but there's a lot of thread changing um, in these tiny spots. You know, like each, each flower is charted with three or four different colors and it's just in that tiny little spot. So there's a lot of thread changing and that can be off-putting to me. So, uh, so I have to, I have to maintain my motivation to bring this one out, but I, I usually just tell myself, okay, just stitch one color, um, like one flower, just do one flower or one, one strand. Like these words were really easy because I said, okay, just one strand of this, of this color and then you can move on to a different project. And so that's what I've that's what I've been doing so far. I'm really bad about um wanting to do things twice. I don't love to do things twice. I love to um I love to do jigsaw puzzles, but I hate doing it more than once. Like once I finish the jigsaw puzzle, I usually like to glue it together because I don't want to do it again. I already know I don't want to do it again, but I want to keep it. So I've got all these glued jigsaw puzzles. What am I going to do with that? I don't know. I don't know. It's a problem. Okay. <clears throat> Another thing. Um, I started this again. This is uh, Welcome Summer by the Drawn Thread. And actually, I had to go out and purchase this uh, a second time. I, I've i done this pattern already. Um, like I said, this was the first thing that I... This is the first chart that I've kitted up by myself. And I thought back then... <clears throat> it's probably, I guess, two years ago now. I thought back then that I just didn't want to be a collector and I was just going to give away all my charts as soon as I was done stitching them. And now, uh, now I realize that it might be beneficial for me to hold on to some of the charts that I really, really love because I might stitch them again for other people, maybe. So I had to go out and buy this again, which is totally okay. Like, this is one of my favorite patterns ever, so I have zero regrets about sharing it with someone else because someone else can appreciate, you know, or to enjoy, enjoy this chart, have the same experience. Okay, so I'm just babbling, but anyway, um, this is a gift for a friend who probably doesn't watch my videos. Um, they just bought a house, and, um, I wanted to, I wanted to stitch something for him, so they came to visit us, um, so this friend, ooh, okay, this friend came to visit us last year, and, um, this particular friend was just super interested in my stitching, and just really, um, just really kind of flattering, and, um, it, it just was, it, May, it always makes you feel good when other people um, appreciate the work you do, even if they don't, well, especially when they don't do the craft themselves and they just recognize that it's 
a labor of love and takes a lot of time and effort. So anyway, he was being so gracious and I was thinking to myself, okay, I'm definitely going to have to gift him something, you know, because he'll actually appreciate it like a lot. So, um, so I decided on this pattern. I went through, I went through a series of different, um, things and I actually, <clears throat> I bought something else for him initially, but I came back to this one and I, I had to get this. So that's enough rambling, Leah. Um, I put this on 32 count vintage blue whisper, which is the same fabric that I put on the thankful, um, the thankful pattern that you just saw. And here it is. Um, I am selecting my own flosses for this. And so far, I'm super happy with how it's turning out. This blue is amazing. And it was a gift from Anne. Anne gave it to me. And I think it's called Admiral. Hang on. Let me, I got to show it to you because I'm in love. Yeah. Okay. Amateur blue. It's dinky dyes. Ooh, I love it. Gorgeous. So, so thank you, Anne. This is a perfect blue for this, I think. I mean, it's the same blue here in this flag as it is in the letters. Um, all the other flosses are just from my stash. So if you are super interested, I will let you know what I'm using, but they're all, they're all fancy. Ooh, I just, love this one so much. I've been stitching on this for like three days at a time. So I'll go in like three days, three day chunks, and then I'll have to put it down for some reason and then, you know, whatever. But I, I expect it won't take much longer to complete. So we have that, that, okay. Um, I have a small start on Crows, Corn, and Cats by Chartmakers. I got this from Kitten Stitcher, her website. Uh, this is a gift for a friend that I have who has a farm and um, her barns are blue so and her house is blue and um, so when I saw this um, I just it just seemed like something really fitting for her. Um, I'm going to be using the called for flosses, but this blue is Dungarees by The Gentle Art. So, so kind of a small start, but I only worked, I don't know, a couple hours on this. So that should be a gift. Um, this, this should be something that I can just finish by the end of the year. Um, and it's sort of autumn themed, so if I can get that done by, like, the end of the summer, that would be great. That's my goal for that. Um, okay, I started, woo -hoo! I started the Modern Folk Embroidery 2020 Sal. Um, this is my first time stitching anything from Modern Folk Embroidery. Um, I have to say I love Jacob. He is the designer. He is so sweet. He's so nice. He's on Instagram and um, I was having a hard time getting my patterns to um, my email. He, was ha he said he had a lot of problems with other people too, but he's just so, I don't know, he's just, he's like, he... He's just so personable. He's great. So 
I got this from um, his website. And okay, so it's a it's a sow. We're getting one like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve parts. And it's going in that order. So right now we just have this section, I think. Um yeah, so after I finished Harmony by um Nancy Turner. I was really sort of missing Quaker, like Quaker in my life. And I saw this, um, I don't know if I'm on his mailing list or something, but anyway, I saw this and I showed my husband and I was like, I don't know, it's really big. I don't know if I should do it. I've got all these little things. And he's like, you need to do that. And I was like, oh, okay. He told me to, so I had to go and I had to do it. So um, I'm not going to do this red. I'm not going to do mono, um, you know, just one single color. But the problem is I haven't decided on what colors to fill in. I'm waffling right now. But what I do know for sure is that all of these borders, so like this border all the way around, and then you see how each Quaker motif has like a, a border. I decided that I want to do those in Gentle Art Soot. Soot is probably one of my favorite flosses. Um, and I, I am known to gripe a little bit about Gentle Art's flosses because I get super frustrated when I'm purchasing Gentle Art Floss online and it gets to me in the mail and it's not the color, it's not the same color as in the picture. They just have, they, they just have a consistency issue um, with their dye lots. Like their dye lots are so different. It's so incredibly frustrating to me personally, but I love their flosses. I love their flosses. So, Although it's frustrating that I usually can't purchase exactly what I see and use it exactly how I want to use it. Usually what I do is I just put it aside and hand select it for some other chart that I'm doing. Like here is case in point. This blue, I bought this blue for, I don't remember. I don't even remember now what I bought it for. But I bought this blue thinking that it was a different blue. And when I got it, I was like, that's not going to work. So I put it in my box. And when I was, you know, um, floss hunting for this chart, I pulled it out. And I was like, oh, well, that's going to be perfect for this. So so when I ordered soot, I made sure to order plenty. I think I ordered something like six skeins, even though I don't think I'm going to use six stains for all of the border sections. When I, when I placed my order, I just said, please send me all six from the same dye lot. And if you can't do that, notify me before you ship them out. And I did. I got, I got all, I got all six from the same dye lot. So no problems there. Okay. Um, show us the start already, Leah. Okay. Okay. I didn't get a whole lot done on this, but... Um, it's a good start. Um, so I am stitching this on 25 count and I went with an antique white because I wanted something really neutral, um, like really neutral. And I don't mean a brown neutral, I mean like a, you know, a cream neutral, like a white neutral, but not bright white. So it's a 25 count antique white Lugana. Um, I've stitched on 25 count for um, the Hade that I have, that I don't stitch on anymore, but I I like the 25 count. It's it's a doable, it's doable for me. I wanted Ada, actually. I wanted Ada because I wanted something that was going to be really easy to stitch, but I think even 18 count Ada is just a little bit too big for this, for me. Um, I didn't want it to be super duper huge, so I went with 25 count. And so far I'm pretty happy with it. Um, my, my only problem so far 
is that I used the wrong floss. Um, this is this is soot, and in one of my other um, one of my other projects is using Garden Gate, and this dye lot of soot looks a lot like the Garden Gate. So I don't know if you can tell, but this here, this line here, and all the way down, that is actually Garden Gate. It's not soot. Um, I actually also stitched, I think, down to here on one of these lines with Garden Gate. And I didn't want to take out all of this because it was a lot of work. It took me like a whole movie, I think, to do, to do this section. But I think I'm just going to keep this because in the grand scheme of things, I don't think you'll be able to tell that it's just slightly darker. Garden Gate is more of a, it's more black. This is more of a gray. It's a dark gray. Gosh. I love, I love this. It's so good. Okay. So anyway, um, there's that progress. And then I just have one more new start to show you. Let me put this away real quick. Okay. Okay, um, I was super excited about this start. This is Flora and Fauna by Willow Hill Samplings. Um, okay, this was a gift from Deborah. She, um, she's Needle and Spoons on Instagram. I saw her, I saw her finish of this, and I was like, whoa! I've almost purchased that, like. A few times now like put it in my cart and then took it out I do that all the time I put things in my cart and I take it out all the time because I have to test myself like do I really want this otherwise I'll just buy everything um so anyway I really like it because it reminds me of where we live right now and I'm just gonna make a couple alterations um these white lilies I'm changing to tiger lilies because tiger lilies actually grow in the ditches um, where I grow up. And this fox looks a lot like my dog, Teddy. So I'm just going to make just a little bit of an alteration on the tail and then the colors to make it look like my dog. I'm keeping the rabbit because we have rabbits all over the place. Tr keeping the trees. I'm keeping the butterflies. This is going to be a monarch and this is going to be, this is actually going to be a... Uh, Mmm, you'll have to see. You'll see later. Um, this is gonna be, this is, I'm keeping this as is. Like, this is the only thing that's, um, that I'm stitching as charted. It's a robin. Um, changing this to a red wing blackbird. And then these grapes, I'm going to be stitching them sort of blue because I want them to represent the front neck grape, which is one of the only grape varieties that grows natively up here in the upper midwest and then the pears you know i'm just keeping the pears um yeah so anyway i'm super excited about this start and um i had a chance to work on this for the last two or three days three i think i had three stitching sessions on this so here we go. Ta -da. It looks pretty good so far, I think. Um, this is Valor, and it's a 40 count Valor by Picture This Plus. Might be one of my new favorite fabrics. Um, like, I just... It's such a relaxing green. I love it so much. It's so good. Um, 40 count, so 1 over 2. That's what I, how I'm stitching it, 1 over 2. And... So, these roses, these are roses. I picked two colors, um, two colors from my stash, and I'm doing the dark red first because I actually want the lighter pink to pick up more of the red that's in the dark. So that's what I'm doing there. And then this is my first tiger lily. Okay. 
already shared this on Instagram that I'm not, um, I'm not super happy about the Tiger Lily, but I'm going to keep it and, you know, it'll be fine. But I charted this Tiger Lily, um, and then I just, I stitched on it before I, before I really, um, took any time to think about it a little bit more. And when I was adding the, um, what are they called? Stamens? You know, the, the little, the little things that poke up in the middle of a lily. When I was adding those, I was like, hmm, I should count those. Because there are certain, there are certain flower types that grow in counts of three. And it turns out that the lily is one of those plant types that grows in counts of three. So the there are six petals and there's six of those stamens. I think it's a stamen. It's a stamen or I don't know if the stamen. I think the stamen is the middle thing. And then the outside things. Anyway, there's six of those. So um yeah. <laughs> My tiger lily is missing a petal and that's the problem. But I'm trying to embrace it as it is, imperfect. Um, I actually read, I read a book. I shared this on Instagram, so it might be old news. But I read a book um, recently about samplers and the little girls who stitched these samplers. And they just kept stitching. They would make these mistakes and they would just leave them in. Why? I don't know. I mean, I, I pick out... I pick out my floss all the time if I miss stitch, you know, if I misplace one of my stitches or if it doesn't look right or something, I, I pull out the stitch and restitch it somewhere else. But these little girls, they just kept, they just kept going. They just kept stitching. And now, now people are doing these reproduction samplers and they find it so charming that these little girls put these mistakes, you know, just left these mistakes in their samplers. And uh, I'm just trying to embrace that spirit a little bit, you know, just, it's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. And maybe, maybe it is charming. I don't know. It's not always charming to me, you know, because I'm fighting my perfectionism. But I just thought I would share in case there are other fellow perfectionists out there who are trying to be a better person. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Um, so that does it for, um, for that new start. And I think that that does it for all of my new starts, actually. The only thing I didn't show you is my FFO. Um, over Christmas, I finished I fully finished a little ornament called The Joy of Christmas by The Drawn Thread. And I actually took a video. I took a video of myself the morning that I was gifting it because, um, like usual, I waited until the last minute to fully finish it and then, yeah, gifted it later that day. So, okay, I'm going to track down that video and I'm going to insert it here so that you can see my FFO. I am in my jammies and I just finished um, FFOing The Joy of Christmas by The Drawn Thread. Um, I finished this minutes before my grandma comes over and so I need to quick put this in a box and um, and gift it to her, but I think it turned out pretty well. <laughs> um, I just laced the back and then I found this crocheted ribbon, cream ribbon, um, and then I put this, oh, this is where I joined it. I don't know. This is where the ends are. If you can hear my son, he's in the bath in the next room because I just had to quick put myself together for a minute so I could get this video in 
um, so you can see the final result. And I know this is so strange, um, but I think it turned out pretty well. So it'll be a nice little thing. Yeah. So like I said, I'm about to gift it. And then I put my name and date on the back. Um, yeah. <laughs> there it is. So. It's done. Moments to spare. Um, okay. So that concludes my own personal stitching. And now... I have some things to share. I got a handful of gifts and cards over Christmas um, and New Year's um, that I wanted to share. And um, I'll just be upfront with you. This was part of my anxiety over making this video. I didn't want to forget anybody. I'm really afraid that I'm leaving somebody out somebody might have sent me something and then I didn't remember because I wasn't really on my A-game over the holidays. I was just super distracted with things and I should have I should have written down what I got from people but I just I didn't. So if I missed you, I'm very sorry. Just let me know so I can thank you. If I haven't already thanked you then just let me know. Okay. So let me, let me do that. Okay, the first thing, no, where are they? Okay, the first thing I wanna show you Okay, the first thing I wanna show you is from Dawn Frosty X Stitch. She does videos on here, um, and I haven't seen her in a while. Dawn, I hope you're doing okay. Um, miss seeing you. Um, she uh, she sent me a little package. She used actual stamps, which just totally made my day. I love it when people use actual real stamps. Um, it's so fun to see stamps like, I would like to be a stamp collector, but I don't know. I'm not very good at collecting and keeping things together in an organized way. Anyway, that's totally beside the point. So what I wanted to show you is she sent me this cute little um, kit. It is two little snowmen. It comes with everything except for the buttons. And... Um, I decided that I want to do this um, the next time we have the next time we have a really big snowstorm which I don't want to jinx myself but we're we're having like a full spring right now and I just know that it's in like a lamb this year which means it's gonna be out like a lion and there might be a huge snowstorm so um, if we do have a snowstorm this late this late in the year I might, I might decide to bring this out and start, um, probably this one, maybe this one, I don't know, I'll start one of them, um, and then if we don't have another sto snowstorm this spring, then I would, I want to bring this out for, um, when it snows again next winter, like the first snowfall or something, I think that would be really fun, a really fun thing to bring out. And then um, she sent me these pins. They are B pins, and I've used them already. They're so sharp that I poked myself um, and bled. <laughs> Sad to say. Um, so I can. It's sort of a funny, stupid story, but I took this out, and it was. Um, I just. Whoop, poked myself and I couldn't start. It was when I was trying to start this um, flora and fauna thing. I was trying to pin where, like where the edge would be. And then I was bleeding on my fingers so I couldn't even, 
I couldn't start because I didn't want to bleed all over my fabric. So they're, they're super sharp and they're super useful. <laughs> I think the point of that story was I need, I need a system where I can actually store these, not, not on this card, which means I need to, I don't know, make myself a pincushion or something. Um, and then she, yeah, she sent me, um, some chocolate, which is already gone. Devoured that. Um, dark chocolate. Amazing. Thank you, Don. That was awesome. Um, and then I got another surprise over Christmas time. Uh, Caitlin sent me a card and this tiny little needle binder. Look at this. So this is def this is going, um, this is going on my Christmas tree farm, um, project because it's perfect. Thank you, Caitlin. That was awesome. Also, such a happy little surprise. Um, okay. I also got, I also got this surprise in the mail. This came after New Year's, but, um, Mev spoils me rotten. I think I might have squealed when I opened this package because it is the DMC, the DMC flosses. I've been wanting one of these. It's amazing. This is going to help me so much. And she knew. I mean, she knew. So this is what I was referring to when I was talking about how, um, it doesn't matter that I didn't leave myself a little note uh, when I was trying to figure out what floss to use for my folk Santa because now I can just use this and I won't be limited to the small um, collection of DMC that I own um, and I won't have to sit there in Michael's or Joann's with the fluorescent lighting and trying to color match certain things or anyway. It's going to make it so much easier. So <laughs> I couldn't believe it that she sent this to me. Thank you so much, Mev. And uh, she just, she spoils me rotten. Okay. And then, um, what else? I'm sorry. I have a little list here. Um, so I also got a handful of, um, cards from people and um, so if I haven't already thanked you I just want to thank specifically um, Jen, Rachel, Jenny, and Daylene. Thank you! Um, those were so sweet to get in the mail. Um, I love I love getting cards and I love the idea of sending cards but I can't get my life together enough to actually send anything out like in a timely manner so holiday cards I'm always like I'm always really um, envious of people who can get them out systematically you know I just I don't know how to do that for myself but I really appreciate um, I just really appreciate being thought of um, thank you for sending me those cards that was so nice and like I said, I hope, I just really hope I didn't forget anybody. Um, yeah. Let me know if I did. Um, okay. And then the last thing I want to show you for gifts was actually from my husband. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, but this video should have good sound quality and should have pretty good lighting because my husband went all out for... <laughs> For my Christmas present this year, he he just bought me all this stuff to um, improve my floss tube videos because um, he's just super encouraging and so he got me um, he got me this microphone that's gonna work with my iPad that I use and my phone if I use my phone um, but this works with speaking of which I don't even think I put that on silent. Okay, so he got me a microphone, which 
I hope it didn't pick up too much background noise, but we're just gonna have to see. So this, this first video is like sort of a test of the new setup. And then he got me some lights. He did all this research about what YouTubers use for lighting and it's just so sweet. He did all the legwork. It's just so nice. And then, and then he was telling everybody at Christmas about my channel and everyone's like, what? What? You're on YouTube? <laughs> and what? What? You have a thousand subscribers? That's crazy. And we're just like, yeah, surprise. Uh, way to make myself self-conscious again. Great. Okay. Press through it. Um, he also got me some stitching stuff. Um, I had put together a little Christmas list for myself of things that I, you know, would like. Um, I think I had maybe one or two stitching things on this Christmas list, but he saw one of them, which I thought, I thought he personally would like, and he did, which is one of the things he got me. Oh no, don't fall out. Sorry about that. Um, this package is hard to pick up because the bottom is open. Um, but anyways, he saw this kit and he was like, yeah, I like that and she'll like to stitch that. So he got it for me. It is the Star Wars, it's like a Star Wars, um, who makes this? Disney, um, who makes this? Oh, it is a Dimensions. This is Dimensions. It's a Dimensions kit. Um, this was my favorite of the Star Wars themed kits. Okay, so my husband, in the spirit of um, spoiling me, he's another person who spoils me, um, he decided to go out on his own to look for more Star Wars um, <laughs> kits. So he got me this one and this one. <laughs> Isn't that sweet? I mean, yeah, we are a Star Wars loving family. Um, I mean, I wouldn't say that it's like my most favorite movie series, but it's up there, you know, it's like we, we both, we both like Star Wars. So anyway, he got me all three and I was like, <laughs> thanks, you know, I'll, I'll stitch them for him, for sure, you know, someday. I'll start with the one, you know, like the one that's all black. The... Anyway. Okay, so that was, that was, um, gifts. Got I mean, I just felt really thankful. So now, um, I will show you a little bit of haul because I got some some things that are really neat that I want to share. Okay, I'm trying not to be super loud. Okay, first thing I want to share is this Modern Folk Embroidery. I originally got this for um, my friend for his um, housewarming gift. It's just a little small thing, but it's actually, it's a little bigger than I thought it would be. I mean... I can read, and I do, I read, um, the dimensions, but they don't always, like, okay. Okay, I can't, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's like 80 by 80. Oh, yeah, that's right, it's like 80 by 80. So this is actually more of a medium than a small, and it just looks deceivingly small, but it's actually not as small. As I thought it would be but also I just didn't think that it was totally 100% perfect for this person so um, now I have it and that's okay this is actually one of the lesser the least expensive charts that modern folk embroidery offers um, and I really like it personally I just really like that tree and that little bird and the heart I like it okay Let's see, I got um, Top Knot Stitcher. I follow her on 
Instagram and okay, not that. Um, and she was having a sale around New Year's or Christmas. I can't remember which one, but I just went to her Etsy store and got some needle minders. Um, this one, I got the last one. I wanted to get multiple of this one so that I could um, gift one of those. And now I'm like, I'm fighting with myself about whether I should give it away or not. And I don't know who's going to win. Me or me. The other me who's saying to give it away. That was confusing. Okay, anyways, I just, um, I just like these. And so I got them. And this was a little free one that she sent. So that was fun. Um... So, I found this pattern. I don't remember where I found it, but I saw it somewhere and I was like, oh, that would be a really good gift for Otto's future um, elementary school teacher, whoever that may be in the future. How many more times can I say future? But I got this because, I mean, it's just so cute. I couldn't find it anywhere um, on any like site that I frequent, so I had to go to the Carriage House Samplings website and buy it from them directly, which is totally fine. Sorry, we have a Samsung appliance um, dishwasher. We have a Samsung dishwasher and it sings to us whenever it's done, so that was going off in the, in the background. I didn't want that to interfere. But anyways, while I was on the Carriage House Sampling website um, to get this adorable pattern, um, I decided to get this O for octopus. Because octopus is amazing. I love octopus. Octopuses. Okay, so I got that. And then... Told you I went to Kitten Stitcher's website to get that drawn thread pattern, so I got that. But also, I chose her website because she was having this sale. Um, the I think I thought it was gonna be fifty percent off clearance, but it was everything in the clearance section was fifty percent off, so it wasn't fifty percent off of the already discounted clearance section. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I was looking through those patterns and I found these charts that I have been eyeing for a long time because they're so awesome. Look, look. So these were 50% off on her website. I could not believe it. So I got this one. It's, um, if you're not familiar with the, um, Bayou, I'm probably not saying that right, but the Bayou, pa the Bayou Tapestry, it's like the oldest, um, tapestry. Um, so I got these two patterns for 50% off. And I'm thinking that I might start this one with the horses. Like, I might start that one next year. For show. Yes. Okay. Also, I got these flosses that were... Oh, oh man. I don't want to open them. But they're, like, limited editions for her shop. And then... I also, um, she sent this, this freebie, which I will not show you that this is the pattern. So you will not be able to copy from this pattern if I hold it this far away, but it's super adorable. Like I can actually see myself stitching this one. Um, so I might, it's a, a nice little small, uh, it's actually not as small Okay, it's not as small as it looks. It it seems like it should be small because it is physically like small. 
but it's actually 93 by 97 stitches. <laughs> like that's, it's like a medium size. It's not small. Anyway, super cute. Little snail, bird, grapes, bunny, butterfly, sunflower, flowers. Adorable. I love it. So thank you to Kids and Kitten Stitcher for that freebie. So then I got all excited um, about the Bayou Tapestry and I went to 123 Stitch and I got myself a big piece of 32 count raw natural linen because I thought that that would be really good for <clears throat> for um, this. And then while I was on 123 Stitch, my fabric could not go alone. So I was on an octopus kick and I got this ink circles chart. It, this is the reflections on a Grecian urn. Um, yeah, all that, those, okay, what am I trying to say? Like all that old timey Greek stuff, Grecian stuff had a lot of octopus, octopuses in the designs because they were like they were an ocean culture so they just had a whole bunch of octopuses all over their stuff see here they are one two three four and these awesome spotted cats or whatever they are in the middle i mean who who doesn't like that octopuses and cats what okay i don't know when i'm gonna stitch that but i just had to have it okay um what am I doing? Okay, that is it for um, stuff that I got. Plans. Let's talk about plans. If you're still here, thanks for sticking around. Like, this is super long, um, <laughs> long video. Okay, anyway, plans. I have some important plans to share with you. The most important thing is next week on March 8th, um, that is International Women's Day, and, um, yeah, International Women's Day. I thought I would have more time to talk about this, but then, you know, I was pushing off this video so I couldn't talk about it, so this is really not, um, not enough notice for most people to, um, to also stitch this with me, but, um, I've noticed on Instagram that there are actually already a lot of people who are stitching this because, um, okay, it's, it's called Suffrage Act, sorry, Suffrage Act by Little House Needleworks. There it is. Okay. Why am I stitching this one? Okay. I'm going to start this on International Women's Day. Because I feel like it's an important holiday. Um, women haven't always had the same rights as everyone else. And so it's important that we, you know, take some time to appreciate um, all of the hard work that women had to do to get us where we are now. And... Um, women didn't get the right to vote in the United States until 1920. So this is actually the 100 year anniversary of women getting the right to vote in this country. Which is crazy. Um, but anyways, I've been seeing this on, on Instagram because um, people are starting it for... Actually, I don't know what they're starting it for exactly. But I bought this chart... Um, with the intention of starting it this this year for International Women's Day. So if you have this chart and you would like to join me um, stitching this on International Women's Day, that'd be awesome. I um, pulled, pulled my flosses and my fabric. I'll show you my little floss toss here. Um, I will be using... Um, 
everything was in my stash already and I'm gonna do this gray fabric okay doesn't doesn't work very well okay so it's like a gray fabric I was gonna do more of the parchment look you know to make it look more like a um, like an old paper or something but the the neutral browns that I had in my stash just didn't really work very well with the flosses that I chose and I was more dedicated to my flosses than I was to the fabric so I chose a gray fabric like a blue gray fabric that's gonna look pretty good and I'm pretty excited and ooh, I'm gonna be using this um, silk in colors this is the thread gatherer that's what it is thread gatherer floss again from Anne thank you so much I've been looking forward to using this for a long time I have admired these flosses from a distance um, for a long time and I have one and I'm so excited to use it so anyways there's that that was the biggest one that's the biggest plan that I had to share with you because um, because what are you doing for International Women's Day I would love to know like I would really love to know what are you doing for International Women's Day I don't know if you'll see me before then chances are slim very slim what did I do with my notes okay um okay the other thing the other two things that I have in my more immediate plans um, is possibly to work more on this pattern which I am NOT gonna do everything I'm just doing this motif this motif up here and then be kind and then probably 2018 up at the top because that's when I started doing floss tube videos and this is how far I am um, so not very far but March is actually my two-year floss tube anniversary month and I don't think I'm gonna really make a big deal about it um, other than I might pull that project out at some point this month as a sort of you know nod to having a floss tube for two years I don't know we'll see and then the third thing that's in my more immediate future although I don't have anything pulled for this I don't have I don't have the flosses or the fabric or anything I just know I need to start this soon um, this is night and day and this is for a friend who um, had a baby recently and I've been meaning to get started on this for a while now and I just haven't so what I'm trying to do going forward is I'm just trying to prioritize my stitching a little bit more um, just trying to be a little bit more conscious of of what I'm stitching for who and that kind of thing so anyway um that is that is all that I have um okay um sorry for that interruption um but really that was all I had left to share with you I hope that everyone is doing well um I invite you to subscribe to my channel and uh, drop me a comment let me know how you're doing and my husband would really like me to say something along the lines of smush 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 that like button so you can do that too if you want um okay that's it talk to you later I don't know when, but I'll talk to you later. Take care.